Lord, you have been our help, generation after generation. Before mountains were born, before you birthed the earth and inhabited the world, forever in the past, forever in the future, you are God. You return people to dust, saying, Come, go back, humans. Because in your perspective, a thousand years are like yesterday past. Like a short period during a, the night watch, you sweep the humans away like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. True in the morning, it thrives renewed, but come evening, it withers all, all dried up. Yes, we are wasting away because you, because of your wrath. We are paralyzed with fear on account of your rage. You put our sins in right in front of you. Set our faults in the light from your face. Yes, all the days slip away because of your fury. We finish up our years with a whimper. We live at best to be 70 years old, maybe 80 if we're strong. But their duration brings hard work and trouble because they go by so quickly. And they and then fly off. We can comprehend the power of your anger. The honor that is due you corresponds to your wrath. Teach us to number our days so we can have a wise heart. Come back to us, Lord. Please be quick. Have some compassion for your servants. Fill us every morning with your faithful love so we can rejoice and celebrate our whole long life. Make us happy for the same amount of time that you have afflicted us. For the same number of years that we saw only trouble. Let your acts be seen by your servants. Let your glory be seen by your children. Let kindness of the Lord our God be over us. Make the work of our hands last. Make the work of our hands last. And that is Psalm 90. So, I'm going to pick out a couple of things that, um, that are really hard for us as human beings to understand, for our mind to get a grasp of. And even in science and the language of math, we have symbols that we don't truly, we know that it's there, we know that it has to exist, but we can't wrap our heads around it. We can't truly understand what it means. And the psalm kind of wraps it up that we should appreciate the glory, the beauty, and the love that comes of zero, which would be forever in the past. We don't know, we know that zero has to exist. 
but we don't truly know where it is. We have a symbolism for it. We, we use it all the time. We use zero all the time, but we don't know what it means. We don't know where nothing is. We don't understand nothing. And that is forever in the past. Starting from nothing. We can only, our brains can only start from something. There has to be a something there. God starts from nothing and goes to infinity. Again, we have a symbol for infinity. But we don't understand what that what that really means. We we say we can keep adding uh, again, a zero to to a number, and and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But we don't know that when we get past a certain certain number of zeros, we don't truly understand. We can't grasp what that actually means. I had a job once where I had to deal in quadrillions. I can I can't write down a quadrillion. It's not possible for me to write down enough zeros for me to reach a quadrillion. Not going to actually happen. Can't count that out. We don't have enough time to count that out. We have numbers that can roll around the planet. They can wrap around the planet. We know that 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 somewhere there's a significance for that number, but we can't grasp what that what that number really 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 means. There are things out there that we know that they exist. We can enjoy their beauty. And we can enjoy the fact that it actually does, because there's such vastness out there that it actually does, that there probably indefinitely is God. There are things out there that, that when that it, it it has to be God showing us that he exists. That his love is actually there. And that there are such infinite and great things out there. But to bring things back to to today, with all the greatness and the infinite love that we know that is out there, that we can see, that we can either hold in our hand when we scoop up a soil. I invite somebody one time to scoop up a a a, a handful. Of soil or sand. And then count the grains. You'll be there. For quite some time. We. It would be the only thing. The the only thing that you would ever do. From when you start. To when you. 
you die. Just one handful. You couldn't. You don't have enough years in you to count each individual grain from a handful. That's amazing stuff. So I ask you, with all of this beauty and love that's out there, why hate? What do we need? Why do we need to hate? We have someone. It, it's it's tragic. It, it 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 truly is tragic that someone was murdered by another person. It doesn't matter that it was someone being chased and being in in and 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 that other person chasing was trying to apprehend him for something that he might have broke some social rule. Only God can create laws. And he has. You look out at the vastness into 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 space and you look at the stare down into a microscope into the infinitesimal and you will see laws. This man may have broke a social rule and maybe this other person he had a job to bring him to social justice to justice of our society for what he did but that man trying to apprehend him had no right to kill him That is all very true. He had no right to kill him. Does it make us angry as a society? Yes, it does. Did this man act solely out of hatred? Maybe he did. I Maybe it, it was a mistake. We will never actually know the extent of that. But we can't go out there and riot. We can, yes, we can stand in solidarity for the family of of this victim, of this man who was killed. Yes, we can. And we should stand in solidarity for him. We should say, no, this was wrong. We can't do that. That is not an act of love. That's an act of hatred. We can we can do that, and we can do so in such a way that we don't do harm to another person. That is the whole point. We cannot do harm to another person. We have leadership out there who are trying to urge things into more harm. We also have leaders who are trying to keep things calm. I don't need to say who is doing what, what countries are doing things to bring about more violence and I don't need to say which countries are trying to bring about more peace. All you have to do is tune into the news and you'll see who is who. It is all there. There are leaders out there trying to use prayer as a weapon. There are people other leaders who are trying to use prayer and moments of silence for us to reflect and bring about love. Some leaders need to lie about their acts and their leadership. Others 
No need. They are open and transparent. None of our leaders are perfect. All of our leaders will make mistakes. That is part of being a human being. That's part of what God gave to us. That was part of our free will. Is that we are allowed to make mistakes. But I will say this. As we, the people who elect officials. As we, the people who need to protest and send messages to leadership. We should do so in a peaceful manner. We can fill the screen so that people can see that we are standing in solidarity and peace for each other. That we are standing in this, in standing for love and that we want to present a state of love. We can do that. You can stand in front of, say, a, a monument or city hall or whatever, whatever the, the, the social representing structure is and we can stand there in solidarity and say that this is not right that we can do better we can do that and when the leadership presents us with the police or Whoever they, they send to ensure. One, these people, if, if leadership is really being leadership, they're sending those there so that, so that the, these men and women who stand, stand in uniform so that we are kept safe. That is what they were supposed to do, keep us safe. We don't need to do anything more than chant that we want love. Rather, it's standing or if it's sitting. All we have to do is chant that we want love. If we go back to our reading today... Let the kindness of the Lord our God be over us. If we are standing in a state and we want love and we are trying to instill more love into our world... Then... That love will spread over the police. And they will join in the love. And they will stand as a barrier for against those who don't want love. Who are trying to spread the hate. They will stand as a barrier between a brave barrier... But a barrier. We need to keep all of this peaceful and love will preside. We don't need to spread more hate. We need to spread love. Lord, your words fill 
us full every morning with your faithful love. Your love is infinite. It has started from nothing and it will go on forever. It will know no bounds. And as it fills us, it will protect us. It will protect our, our, our bodies. It will protect our souls. It will protect our spirits, our minds, our entire being. That love will guide us to vast achievements, help us find new and exciting things that you have created. It will open our eyes to the infiniteness of your beauty. We need to maintain that love in this time. We need to To stay with that love. You will have always descended your spirit upon us. Sent us the angels to keep us within love. You have given each of us the ability to live strongly inside of that love. To live protected and together, join together through the love. Help us to open our eyes, our ears, and all of our senses so that we can find our way with that love through these times where people want to hate. Help and guide us so that we can surround those who want to hate with your love so that they will feel it and they will join in with love. That's all you've ever taught us, Lord, is to love. And we want to thank you and show our gratitude for everything that you have given us. So, thank you, and amen. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.